Tom Mullen from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass of ECU on the 26th of September to spread the message of freedom. And I guess I wanted uh, to kind of broach the topic of uh, membership. Uh, a few days ago, I ran into a really great person named Ty, and he was asking about how to be a member of Liberate RVA. And there's really one rule to Liberate RVA, and that's uh, you talk about freedom. Uh, <laughs> well, really, it's a non-political organization, so uh, really anything goes. You know, all beliefs, all ideas, um, every ideology is all welcome. Um, of course, as long as you're not violently forcing these ideas to anyone, anything goes, right? As long as um, you're not advocating for the, for the violence of the state, adv advocating for the violence of politics, anything else goes. You know, that's the best way we can achieve that freedom together. That's the best way we can get to that rich diversity of communities of preferences uh, that we all want to live in. We all want to uh, experience our own kind of lifestyles and without fear, without that um, being, I guess, uh, afraid, uh, you know, that one party of particular pre preferences against the monopoly on law the state has and to throw you into cage other ones, right? To finally be free, to finally be yourself, to finally uh, experience this, this awesome thing called life. And so, yeah, the membership is very easy. Uh, we also have a uh, freedom petition. You know, there's another way for anyone who wants to advocate for uh, for freedom. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And signing the freedom petition is another way to do it as well. And, you know, this is pretty much the saying that you stand, you have a, you, you put down that last moral stand, I guess, not just state violence, but all violence, you know, especially the violence that we do to each other and the violence that's done to children. So, and that's really it. Membership is pretty easy. And of course, anyone who's part of Liberate RVA can speak for Liberate RVA. Um, there's no president or VP or anything like that. Uh, of course, you know, if there's anyone else who wants to get under the video camera, come out here and talk as well, you know, please, I encourage anyone to actually speak out and talk about the truth. So, thank you for watching, thank you for enjoying, and please share and subscribe. See you at the Victor Party. So that's the head and violence behind this matrix, that this government, this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Uh, three now, four of our front over there. Right, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that, I, mean I'm, I agree with everything you said. I mean, yeah? I do believe that you know, the government is... I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, so I'm a bit, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, so this moral position, this uh, moral stance that you and I share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, an means without, archy means rulers. Like uh, monarchy means one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Right, right, that means we just, you know, you function as, as people, as a group without a leader. Exactly. Or, uh, right. Yeah. So you're, you're for anarchy. Yeah, I'm a free for, I'm a for a free and voluntary society. So what government is then? They have a monopoly on these services that they're forcing you to accept and you don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to complete against the services. Like, they have a monopoly on law. That's why we don't have a polycentric legal system, right? They have a monopoly on security. Right, they have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on currency, on, uh, you know, if you're into, if you're into conspiracy, I understand that, I guess you wouldn't know what the, the Fed is, right? Yeah, so they have a monopoly on currency. You don't have the freedom to create a medium of exchange and trade up with another person without government threatening you and throwing you to a case with the people. Right, so we can still have currency and, and law and security and roads and all this stuff, but in, in the way that you're in charge of deciding who's the best person to provide you that service, right? Uh, because in an event, that, that's really what government is. It's these strangers that's trying to decide how best to decide what business, service, or product can best suit your purpose, right? The only person who can decide that is just you, right? Nobody knows you better than you. That's true, right? Some people are crazy. Some people are crazy, yeah, yeah. Then that's what I mean, we can still have rules, we can still have security, we can still have all this stuff, and that's the best form of self-defense against the would-be crazies, right? You know, where are you going to go if you're aggressive against any member of our community? You know it's going to house, feed, food, right to their homes, you know, your AT&T service provider will pay you $150 to cancel their service, right? So that's the best kind of protection form against the sociopaths, against the psychopaths. Yeah, but, uh, but we can't get them unless we're united with these uh, values that you and I already share. Right, right, okay. Yeah, man. Cool. cool. All right. Keep, keep preaching your message. All right, man. Now, let me give you a pamphlet then. Um, Here you go, man. All right, man. Take good care. Right. So that's the hidden bias behind this matrix, this, this government, this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that you and I, and my two friends behind you, already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't uh, disagree. I mean, I, uh, I definitely have been thinking about it a lot lately. You have? Yeah. And um, there's definitely some inconsistencies with the news and just the 
So, so then, then you see what government is objectively then, right? They have a monopoly on these services, right? That they force on you to accept and you're forced you to pay for whether you want them or not, right? They have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, security, roads, currency, first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, withhold your resources. You even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be abusive and harmful to the consumer. Right, right. You can still have rules. You can still have a policy centric legal system. Yeah. Right? But not outside of their monopoly. If you try to compete against their monopoly, they'll fine you. If you don't pay that fine, they'll throw you into a cage. Right? So this more projection that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called canon. Uh, like in science, anions and cations, N means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules. We can have rich, diverse, awesome communities of preferences. When like an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. All right? But with government, you have to force the majority of preference onto everyone in a geographic region. All right? So that's, it doesn't allow us to have the freedom to associate or disassociate. Uh, it becomes more political warfare. You're a Republican, I'm a Democrat. And, and nothing ever changes, nothing gets done, nothing ever, you know, we continue, taxes continue to grow and continue to keep losing more and more for years. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah? Alright, cool. My name is Cal. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the, um, the wing nuts? The wing nuts? Yeah. Uh, well, I would call them status and denial because the thing is, um, well, status is a term as a person who uses violence. Is that what they're called, the wing nuts? Yeah, yeah they wrong, call themselves right? the wing nuts. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of other people out there. For example, the government only knows how to solve problems through violence, so it doesn't make sense that you're going to end violence with violence. You're going to end tyranny with tyranny, right? right? Uh, you're, you're like trying to infiltrate an organization that's founded on violence and attempt to overturn it itself. It doesn't really make sense, right? Is this another form of tyranny? You know, and that's why it hasn't gone anywhere. You know, it only gets more violent. But violence only begets more violence, right? Yeah, yeah. So trying to do a, a universal stance and going against that and doing what we already do in our day-to-day lives. We don't use violence to solve our problems. You know, let's not compromise there. Yeah. Cool. Any uh, books? You books? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> All right, so I have these um, pamphlets here. In the back of the uh, anarchy pamphlet, though, you're going to find a lot of great stuff, a lot of great literature in here. A lot of stuff that has kind of helped me uh, come out of this, I guess, allegory of politics. Right, right. Cave sort of thing. Um, we also have a party this Friday. You're more than welcome to come. Awesome. What's your name? Cal. Cal? Yeah. I'm Josh. Nice Josh. to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, Josh. Take good care. Alright, the thing is, the word statism is it's, uh, relatively still a new word. But the thing is, it's such a word that if you type it in Google, you come out and find the true aspect of it. Has it been conned by the government? They don't want to mess with that word at all. Uh, they'll do like double meaning for everything. Like they have a double meaning for anarchy, try to say it's chaos. They have a double meaning with taxation, try to say it's not theft. But there's no double meaning with statism. You know, that's objectively, that's, that's what it is. Uh, even this sounds like it. Sounds but like then people don't realize the majority of statism, yeah. loving to be ruled by assholes. Right? Yeah. It's just so by much. sociopath. Even I, has a great urban dictionary definition. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's that? It's great. It goes look so much. Look it up. Well, you gotta hear this. All right. Here's the urban dictionary. Status. Modern day supporter of political slavery. A secular state worshiper. Member of the cult of the state. An irrational, immoral, collectivist parasite which leases off the productive private sector at the point of a gun while attempting to justify such behavior through invalid, unethical, altruistic arguments. Use the status laws, oppressive edicts backed by criminal violence to intimidate and run the neo slave racket. Typically found in government, politics, bureaucracy, police, military, and law. AKA supporter of such, governmentalist, nationalist, a degenerate subhuman who makes her life a living hell. An accident just waiting to happen. Here's the uh, how it's used in a, in a sentence. A status is this about anyone who's in, who's not an anarcho-capitalist. <laughs> 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 That's actually very funny. <laughs> Damn. I got voted up 351 times. Awesome. Well, alright, so even in here, uh, have, to, have to read this yet? Images of color, images of crime? No. no? Alright, so this is like 480 class. So, right in the first page, this is uh, very interesting. It tells you where all the problems come from already. Um, because they look different from Americans of European descent, 
and in some cases speak languages other than English. Millions of people are stigmatized, stereotyped, and victimized by our soul soul institutions. In particular, the juvenile and criminal justice system and the police. Bam, you just told me the problem is the state. <laughs> you just told me the problem is government. They're the ones who are bigoted, right? Mm -hmm. But of course, we're only allowed, this is the only kind of monopoly on law we're allowed to have. So of course we have to find different ways to kind of put band-aid solutions to them. Uh, but he's just telling me right there, the problem is government on their monopoly of services, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know, like, a, like you go to a restaurant and they're racist, like, look, I'm not gonna go there, right? right exactly. And maybe they'll go bankrupt the next day, you have the freedom to compete, but you, these can't go bankrupt, right? So what if you get rid of a crooked cop, you know? Uh, you're still forcing me to pay for that service, right? I would rather boycott it, I would rather have it go bankrupt, I would rather have the, the freedom to compete and provide, you know, a non-biased, a non-racist organization, a non-bigoted one, you know? So, uh, so this is right there, even on page one. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely. I've been curious. I walked past a lot. I did never ask. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm a criminal justice major. I think I have to. I have right. to go ask. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm required. Right. <laughs> yeah. So then, then that's what you'll have in a free and voluntary society. A rich person still have rules, mm -hmm. you just won't have strangers, politicians, arbitrary deciding how best their life should be lived. Right. You have rich, diverse, awesome communities catering to those lifestyles. You'll have like um, an apartment that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, mm -hmm. right? Whatever those rules are, real contracts, right? The constitution is not a contract, right? Dealing with law. Mm -hmm. I didn't give a power attorney when I was a little zygote. I didn't give permission for like generations before to force the social security onto me. I did not accept that service, yet I'm forced to pay for it and I'll never have that when I'm you know, ready to retire, mm -hmm. right? So even the Constitution is not a real contract. It was um, what, only 37 people signed it. Yeah, they didn't, guidelines. It was guidelines. Didn't have the consent of everybody. Yeah, not a guidelines real contract. Guidelines of the wealthy white men. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> of the upper class, of the rich, the of the one percent. Yeah. Right. Mm. The founding tyrants. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So that's why I want real contracts. I mean, some of this stuff exists, like golf course communities. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, it's like, and there are homeowner associations that you know help maintain the roads, so they still build roads. They still have security, uh, and they have that awesome passive green that can go out there and golf. Yeah, you know? definitely. Senior home communities in Florida, 55 plus older, you know, discriminate against anyone who's 54 under. But I mean, that's that's what you'll have a lot it of would, communities. It would have dis yeah. discrimination, but I mean, yeah. you would voluntarily agree to be a part of right. whatever community here. And then you have a free market not just choose and select. And you never have to be like, fearful or afraid because I mean, that's what government does. They force the majority of preference onto everyone in a geographic region. And then it just becomes political warfare trying to get that seat of power. You're a Democrat, I'm a Republican, and a Libertarian or Green Party, and it just never goes anywhere. And for me, it's like, well, so what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow now? How long did that take? Yeah. Right? 75 years is not a measure of success. <laughs> To gain one scrap of our one plant, <laughs> and we have lost so much others. Yeah, true. So I'm just trying to um, let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Right. Let's get to a uh, to a free and voluntary society outside of the here's some nature. Of course, living. Very, lots oh. of roadblocks, yeah. but definitely interesting. I'm glad I asked. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course, much. my name is Cal. Caitlin. Caitlin, pleasure to meet you, Caitlin. Yeah, pleasure. And I'm pretty much out here every day, so if you have more I'll questions, just say hi. Just say hi. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks. Right, of course. <laughs> Take good care, Caitlin. You too. Yeah, man, absolutely. Absolutely, yes, sir. Here you go, sir. All right, take good care, sir. I see you out here from time to time, man. Great to sign. Thank you, thank you. I agree with you. Right. <laughs> we are very, very more. Yeah. The government, so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Now I'm trying to turn to our community and turn away from their immorality. How about that? Yeah. Not easy. Right? Not easy, but you got to start somewhere. Oh yeah, and you can get just one at a time. That's that's yeah. You yep. can get one at a time. That's enough for me. I applaud your effort. Man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you take good care. So that's yeah. the hidden violence behind government. And that this organization, this matrix, only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way. And that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions you and I, my different Tyler here, already shared. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I can believe you. Right? 
Yeah. And, and, and that's about like a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Nice, nice. Uh, so this more projection, you and I, us three already share against using binding. Yeah, I problems. think anyone who thinks agrees with that. Right. That's why, like, I volunteered for this one as opposed to Mormons to sit over there and get evil <laughs> eliminated. But uh, yeah, no, I uh, I definitely agree with you. Thank you, friend. Thank you. My name is Cal. Hey, Porter. Porter, pleasure to meet you, Porter. This is my good friend Tyler. Hey, man. Uh, but one last thing, come a little closer to Cam. All right, one last thing is our, so this more projection that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, like in science, anions and cations, an means without, archy means rulers. So like uh, monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Mm -hmm. So you look what government is, they have a monopoly on law, they have a monopoly on security, they have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on currency, on roads. You don't have the freedom to cancel and subscribe, or you even have the freedom to compete and provide a better service. It's not going to be abusive and uh, harmful to you as the consumer, right? So, outside of that, you can have a polycentric legal system. You can still have security, but they're providing you the service. They wouldn't be roughing you up like in the way you were telling me, like these, these folks did, right? Yeah, uh, that's why I have like a, a scar here and a scar here. Yeah. What, what were like the finer details? Like, were you just at a bar and they told you to leave? Um, actually, no. Is that I went out to make a phone call and I was in my uh, friend's front lawn, but I was like, yeah. you know, when you make a phone call and you like kind of <laughs> no, wander off. And I went five feet to the left because I went around the side of the house, so I was on the border, and uh, so I was technically in someone else's. Lawn, front lawn, and I uh, sat down for like a second. And I was in Randolph, so like the uh, precinct is like right there. And the guy called the cops. I, I, I guess, I mean, apparently, what they tell me is what the problem was. He's autistic, he doesn't know how to handle situations like that. So I uh, I sat down to make the phone call because I thought I was in my friend's front lawn, but I was actually not. And uh, they came within about like a minute, and I didn't know what was going on. And I kind of got I got angry about it because I was like, "What the fuck? Like, I'm supposed to be here." And they're like, "No, you're not." So then they like immediately. I stood up. And I guess that was like a sense of like aggression to them, and I was tackled on my face. So I have this, and I like felt like this. You can kind of see that sense. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. That sucks, man. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, it doesn't even. Um, completely arbitrary. Uh, it happened on Friday. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I it wasn't that big deal. I spent. The night in jail or lockup got out. What did you get charged with? Uh, public intoxication and swearing because I was drunk during the time. So at least you get charged with the resistance. Freedom of speech. Yeah. No, I would. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy about that. All, that. all that stuff is bullshit charges. So, 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 yeah. so when they came, when they approached you, were they like talking at you a lot, or were they like, hey, you can't? Like, this is. Uh, they were. They were pretty. They were pretty mad. And I think that, that that did have a lot to do with it. So just because like, like they started insulting me and I just didn't really want to take that at the time. Yeah. Uh, granted, it was like a lot to do with my intoxication. If I was not intoxicated and they were insulting me like that, um, I probably would not have done anything because... I don't think you didn't do anything I don't, that warranted that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, well, thank you. I think that there is a little bit of fault on my part. For mistakes. To be fair. For, yeah. Well, I guess for, for what? For uh, realizing that uh, you're dealing with extortionists yeah. and, uh, you know, you have to be, yeah, you do have I to should be. Have known, I should have known that what the result of what I was saying was going to do. But I was intoxicated, so I was fed up with the situation. And I reacted wrong. I did a ride along one night and there was a guy just walking home and he was staggering a little because he was wasted. 
But instead of giving him a ride home that would have taken 10 minutes, we spent two hours in lockup just charging him for a drunken public. It was a complete yeah. waste of time. And the whole reason they even got to put handcuffs onto him is because instead of just approaching him and be like, hey, are you doing all right? Are you good? They just fucked with him. Like, are you capable to do what you need to be doing here? Like, how many fingers am I holding up? Follow him with your eye. Like, dude, he's walking down the street. And the whole time, just like, can I get a ride? Like, and they were like, this is not a taxi service. This is a one-way trip to jail. That's the only ride we're giving anyone. And, um, yeah, and I hate to hear it, but it could have been much worse. They could have charged, like, cause they can make yeah, up. No, they definitely like, could. Yeah. The but they still got you, cause uh, again, so in a state control market where they control the police, their salary is funded on extorting. So they have to give you some kind of charges because their salary, cause they go to court, they get those extra hours for you in court. Um, you know, the, the entire, their entire work is funded on stealing your money. And that's a must even from taxes, but to keep doing it in different ways to kind of find you for whatever reason. How much do you think you will get extorted? I know 50 uh, just for the tip. Well, it was, a, I actually did go to court already. And uh, um, through literally three days later, and it was a $25 a fine, but then I had to pay in total $102. Which I don't know where they're making up that number. Court fees. Yeah, it is court they, fees. They want to charge you for wasting their it's time. It's literally like right? I walked. So I walked fought. an hour and thirty minutes to go to the court because the court <laughs> is down. John Marshall. It's on Hall. Oh yeah, I know. What you're it's all the way down there. The circuit court. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I walk in the door. I go through like the metal detector or whatever. I sit down. They call my name. And then they bring me through that, and apparently that's seventy-five dollars worth of work for them. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But. Right, and you're you're already kind of paying for that to taxes, but this additional extra charges on there. It's like, yeah, no, right. I, I don't know how like my crime is worth. Who is the victim? You were. This right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. This is a crime. Show me the victim. <laughs> right. Yeah. They gotta Very bully someone. So, so they're gonna get you in public intoxication. What? They rather you have drunk driving. Right? Yeah. So, uh, I can't this drive home smart. while I'm drunk. Smart. Thanks, man. But I can't walk home drunk. Where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to get home? Right? You just robbed me of all my opportunities. Right? Stand in a closet and I'll sober up or something? No. Right? Yeah, that's you were trying to be responsible. Exactly what happened. Yeah. I had to sleep on a floor and then walk to. I mean, I'm pretty pissed off about it. No, sorry, man. I'll like, tell you the least. Anyways, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a party tomorrow, Freedom Gathering. You're more than welcome to come join us. We meet okay. a lot of other anarchists, meet a lot of people who also want to end that state. Um, people are trying to get to that free and voluntary society that we, you all kind of want to get there. And uh, it starts at 7 p.m. I'll give you some pamphlets. Uh, you'll find the. Uh, and you have a cigarette, dude. Awesome. So, here's some pamphlets. You'll find the uh, the events page on the website, Liberty at RBA. And uh, yeah, man, welcome to come on over. All right, thank you. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for sharing your story. Yeah, no problem. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. Liberate RBA!